All right. So up next we had weird match of the night, Jack Swagger versus Curtis Axel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryback is absent. Here. Yeah, Ryback is absent because he had to deal with some lingering injuries. Um, thankfully, it sounds like he won't be out that long. He should be back this month, actually, either the middle of this month or towards the tail end of it. So we won't have to go that long without the big guy uh, yeah, for the I'm time glad. being. I don't want to go any time without the big guy. He's the best. I know. That that makes that makes two of you guys, you and James, and me too. But I, I can't I, wait I, for him to come back and get his fourth WWE championship run. Wouldn't it be his fifth? He's already a four-time WWE champion. I thought he was a three-time WWE champion. He, he said he's a four-time WWE champion. Oh. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, I really want to uh, I really want to see Ryback come back as a babyface. So let's hope that that happens. Which is hilarious because I don't know about you, but I'm personally also wishing that Brock Lesnar turns face soon. Really? Yeah. See, I think Lesnar is so natural in that heel role. He is natural in the heel role, but when you're that cool... You're going to get cheered inevitably. Well, see, here's the thing. I, I think he'll be a heel by force, but he'll be a, a, a face more organically where it counts in terms of crowd reaction. Right. So I don't see him turning. But I, so I, like, I just I just like want to see him. Uh, like, there are so many more heels that I want to see him fight than there are faces. Right. Like, I want to see him Orton. I want to see him and uh, uh, heel Batista. I want to see him and Mark Henry, where Mark Henry's the heel, you know, and, and if he's a face, or if he's a heel, then it's pretty much just John Cena, Roman Reigns, John Cena, Roman Reigns, John Cena, Roman Reigns, maybe Daniel Bryan, but then John Cena, Roman Reigns. Like, I just don't care. Right. I know, I completely understand. It's not like they're going to do Brock Lesnar versus Chris Jericho. Good God, that would be a slaughter. Yeah, as would uh, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Hell, and I, and I hate to say this, as much as I'd probably enjoy the match... What, when you stack it <gasps> okay, up, I just realized something. Yeah. Babyface, or uh, not babyface, heel Lesnar has one thing going for him that I wouldn't give up, even if it meant getting babyface Lesnar. Which is? Lesnar Ambrose in the future. Yeah, and I, I, I was going to say, yeah, Lesnar Ambrose and uh, Lesnar Bryan, I mean, I, I think he'd destroy those two guys. The difference is... Where, where you really I, think he would destroy Ambrose? Oh, he'd ragdoll him, dude. I have no question. The only way Ambrose would have a fighting chance is if it was in his environment and he would just be able to go nuts. Well, of course it would be. Well, we, we don't know that. I mean, him facing Cena for the championship was a normal match. Him beating the streak was a normal match, which I thought that would be a no-holds-barred match because that seemed like it was a tradition. Yeah, but when, I'm, when I think of, of Lesnar-Ambrose, I think of like that CM Punk versus Lesnar kind of match. That's true, but even that was a normal match. It just had a lot of shenanigans throughout because of Heyman. Uh, but it was a very is that a normal match? match? Yeah, yeah, it was. A I thought that match. was a no DQ match. I don't think it was. I I, th I thought it was a normal unless that was tacked on maybe last minute. I don't know because I, I remember it originally being billed as just a standard one on one match. But you know, my thing is, yeah, if Dean didn't have those restraints, but even then, though, like, I could just see Lesnar manhandling him. What I was going to say, though, is the difference between Lesnar manhandling Brian and him manhandling Ambrose, because I see both happen, which I know is going to get me in a lot of hot water, but I'm just being honest, uh, is that where when he destroys Brian, I could see it being purely a sympathetic angle, whereas when he destroys Ambrose, yeah, the sympathy is going to be there. But Ambrose would come back, and yeah. he'd be even more devious and more psychotic, and I love that. Like, I could picture him. Lesnar just brutalizes him, and I know WWE doesn't really allow, you know, blood in their matches anymore, but just because it's fantasy booking, it's, well, we do whatever the hell we want here. Uh, Ambrose is, like, donning the crimson mask, and all he does is just smile at, at Lesnar and mouths to him. Is that, is that all you got? Oh, Jesus, yes. And see, that's the difference, because whereas Brian would get mauled and commentators would be all somber and be like the hero making its last stand and couldn't get it done and, and this and that with Ambrose, it's like, what is wrong with him? Where does he even come from? And yeah, even like, Les I could see I could see Lesnar Ambrose going the way of Taker Triple H at WrestleMania 28 
the one where Triple H hit the tombstone, and then he was like, why won't you die? Heck yeah, yeah, I, and you know what, with the people involved, it could be so perfect, because when Ambrose mounts that, I wouldn't want the camera to immediately pan to Heyman, and Heyman would just yes. make his face, where it would just be like, <laughs> my god, Brock, my god, look at it, just when did Paul Heyman become the- Paul Bearer? Well, yeah, I mean, it'd just be that, I mean, just that shock of, like, he's going to have a freaking stroke because he doesn't understand why Ambrose just won't lay down and die. And even Brock, being in total control and having nothing to worry about, even he'd look a bit perplexed. I'd have him kind of give a look like, the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, and, but knowing WWE, that would be the point where Brock picks him up for a, a second or, or even maybe third F5 and gets the pin. Right. But... At least, dude, at least it would go down in those ranks for me as, like, Shawn Michaels slapping Taker yeah. uh, or, or those guys. That, just that last act of defiance like yep. a boss. And and that's the difference. So I'd, I'd be okay with uh, – with And then the next night Ambrose shows up and he's like, Brock Lesnar threw everything that he had at me last night, and I'm still here! <laughs> the funny thing is, though, I don't even know how Ambrose would compete after that because of his nature of selling, like, literally know, after the right? beat. He would I, literally just come out in a body cast. He'd come out in a body Somebody cast. Somebody else would have to hold the mic for him. <laughs> Dean Ambrose is the only guy with how he carries pain and like and like selling over for matches. He is the only guy that makes the finger poke of doom a legitimate painful finisher because they would just just poke him and he would just writhe in pain from all of his previous injuries. Like, oh, you got the shoulder. Wasn't that six years ago? Yeah, never forget. So yeah. Ziggler sells everything. Ambrose sells everything from always. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, we have another discussion, Ash, and this is the second one in the same episode, uh, a Lesnar championship analysis. I mean, the first one being about champions and contenders. Uh, this one, not only about dream matches, but just how those matches would go and the quality of his opponents. And these are smaller guys we're talking about here. Um, but see, even then, it works. It's just all about the story that you want to go with. So Lesnar's got so many options. And if he were to turn face... I feel like that would be a great moment because, I mean, it, you know the one thing we'd get if he turned face would be Heyman would be eating F5s, which I think would consistently get pops from the crowd. What? Well, yeah, because Heyman is a heel, so it's not like he's going to be along for the ride. Why can't Heyman turn face with him? Because Heyman being a face, uh, the only time that's ever worked is that if he was leading something ECW related. What I do think you he, call Heyman and Punk? Well, Heyman and Punk, well, clearly that was a heel union. Do Punk was a heel when he was with Heyman. And then when Punk turned face, that's when Heyman stabbed him in the back. Yeah, so I guess that, that is that, true, isn't it? That example isn't even valid. Um, huh. But yeah, well, I, what about I just, when Brock Lesnar turned face in two thousand whatever it was? That's after Heyman betrayed him to align with the Big Show. He screwed Lesnar out of his first WWE Championship reign and his winning streak. That's right. Les, yeah, Lesnar F five Big Show. That was at the Survivor Series two thousand and two. He F five Big Show. But Heyman I don't remember. Him. Did 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 Paul Heyman start eating F fives back then? Yeah, he did. They built a whole angle around it to where Lesnar and Heyman got in a steel cage together, and he finally was able to F5 Paul Heyman. It was this big moment for SmackDown at the time. See, I need to go back and watch SmackDown from the early 2000s because, like, I remember it being awesome, but I remember I remember so little because I was... Oh, yeah, dude, Heyman made Lesnar's life a living hell. He, he, that's where Team Angle came from because he got the title off Lesnar onto the big show. Then Lesnar, then Big Show lost the title to Angle a month later at Armageddon, and after Lesnar interfered and gave Angle the championship, but Lesnar didn't know that Heyman had Angle in his pocket, and he said Angle will take on any challenger, but Brock Lesnar, Team Angle was created, Heyman had all these defense barriers, finally couldn't stop it when Lesnar won the Royal Rumble that year. Uh, and then at one point he beats, I think, Team Angle, like the entire trio, in like a handicap match, and he got to pick his opponent for next week's SmackDown. He picked Heyman in a cage, and that was the big climax to their personal beef. He was able to F5 Heyman inside the steel cage. So, so yeah, the he... climax happened on a random episode of SmackDown. Yeah, at least wow. between those two. And then, of course, you know the climax with uh, with Lesnar Angle. That was the main event of 19. WrestleMania right. 19. I knew about that. But... Right. Oh, I'm so uneducated. Well, so we'll see that this is why, like, you've commented on my freak memory in the past. I'm glad it actually served my point for a change. Because, yeah, I just don't see Heyman as a babyface unless he was leading some kind of ECW crusade. Uh, I mean, WWE, maybe they could make it work because people love Heyman. And I think people think Heyman, at least when he talks, is cool like Lesnar. 
but I don't know. It would take some conditioning on my behalf to really, uh, really. Yeah, embrace. accept it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's. Wow, we got so far off topic. Let's move on. Um, Jack Swagger defeats Curtis Axel. Oh yeah, that was that was so. How did we? How did that happen? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, well, I, I guess speaking of Paul Heyman and all these guys, there was one failed Heyman guy project. Because uh, he taps out to the uh, the Patriot lock. And then after the match, Bo is up on the stage and he just introduced three random people. One of them lost his life savings. One failed his citizenship test. And then some woman has a son who wants to be like Vladimir Putin instead of Swagger. And he's just telling everyone to just believe. And it was pretty glorious, but it was also like, wow, you're really reaching here, aren't you, WWE? But you know what I you know what though I can forgive it only because I think Bo is that corny and that goofy to try and reach for anything and really I, this is gonna seem like a weird point to bring up but I feel the need to anyway the funniest part to me of this segment didn't even have anything to do with Bo Dallas when they got to the guy that failed his citizenship test yeah. and would have to be deported the camera pants to Seb Coulter who's making these motions like good get out of here like way to be a sympathetic baby face Seb uh, the guy tries to get in here honestly and because he fails it's like what no second chances no sympathy way to be a dick mule <laughs> oh yeah uh, Zeb's back yeah Zeb is back and um, for those of you who missed my pining over Ricardo Rodriguez turning on RVD, do I have great news for you? Because I just have this this strange feeling that Zeb is going to leave Swagger for Bo Dallas. I don't know. So that's my new thing. I can even hear Ashton chuckling over there. So, yeah, all of you who enjoyed my Well, I think the main reason I'm chuckling is because I'm imagining that pairing, and I hope you're right. Dude, like, the only reason I say it – and just to recap for everybody, since I mentioned it, the reason I said that I thought Ricardo Rodriguez would turn on Van Dam is because there, this wasn't the first time that Alberto Del Rio abused Ricardo Rodriguez or they had that hero relationship. And I always, I just thought it was a long con to make his employer happy to get the title back on uh, Del Rio, you know, to keep him strong. Here, it's for the exact reasons that everybody's been saying. You know, Swagger allegedly let America down and all those people. And, you know, I could see Zeb cutting the heel promo saying, you know, Jack, I used to call you a real American, but a real American never lets his country down when it matters most and sides with Dallas. And you know what? Legitimately, if we were to treat this with a modicum of seriousness, I do think it could be an intriguing pairing. And honestly, in a morbidly curious way, I want to see it. I want to see Zeb put his hand over his heart and say, believe. I think that could be hysterical. So we'll see what happens. That is in a really morbid way. Yeah, it is. I, and believe me, I fully admit it. And you even see, like, I presented this in, in like, a half-jovial manner because I don't expect it to materialize. But if it does, you'll all remember that I called it. And believe me, so will I. So wait and see. And you won't let anyone forget, even if they uh, I won't, man. Please. And I don't me. blame you. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So um, up next, we had Adam Rose versus Titus O'Neil. Um, Heath Slater was at ringside doing his hilarious puppy bark and just cracks me up every time. And, um, Heath Slater is just randomly trying to distract Adam Rose, I guess. And the bunny ends up tackling Slater on the floor. And dude, this was the second segment where I, I just have to say I had fun with it. And I think people expect too much out of segments that are intentionally constructed to be comedy, um, because I, I know that's me. usually you though, so I'm surprised. Well, yeah, I mean, but here's the thing: I'm very specific though, because to my credit, I think I always say I understand why they do it. They're comedy gimmicks, but it's just not my type of comedy. This what? This was hysterical. You had this guy in this bunny costume beat the bejesus out of Heath Slater. And to me, um, all I was thinking was, I wish it would have turned out that the person in the bunny costume was a woman. Because Heath Slater would have just physically assaulted a female, and that could have been a ridiculous storyline. <laughs> and I wouldn't have put it past me. Honestly, like, I, thought... I, I genuinely wanted the bunny to take the helmet off and have it be, like, Charlotte or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, some random female from NXT. Well, you say female. I was just thinking random NXT talent in general. I thought that would have been a really cool reveal. 
But uh, I, I even joked with both James and Abel, like Peter Cottontail and Adam Rose, next tag team champions. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I thought this was hilarious. And James showed me a meme later on, this tricks meme. Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Give me that cereal. It was oh, it's so good. So nicely done. I enjoyed it. Of course, Titus O'Neil lost. Adam Rose, if James is being serious, I don't know if he was being hyperbolic, he said that Adam Rose is currently 19-0 and 0 on the main roster. I believe it. That's I not believe hard to believe at all. That's not hard to believe at all. You're absolutely I know right. he's undefeated. It's just a matter of whether it's 19 or not. Exactly. So, way to go, Adam Rose. Would still like to see you in some kind of... But maybe yeah, let's now... let's see this streak pay off. <laughs> yeah, let's see this streak. I mean, maybe, maybe now... We are finally going to get a semblance of a program. We're going to get Adam Rose and Peter Cottontail versus Slater Gator. And part of me. That'll be the pre-show match for the next three freaking months. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And then the third and final bout is the big reveal of who exactly the bunny is. So I think that's actually what they're building towards. I don't know if they're actually going to have any tag team matches, but I do think that this was the first in a long series of steps towards debuting somebody new who was under the bunny costume and frankly if i had to pick i hope it's sammy zade i do too and you know what let me say this and 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 again i I know this will probably be another point where people scratch their heads or just be like john are are you sure you really mean that but i i personally think it's a clever way to debut somebody if you're right i do think you're right because this was something i mean the camera focused on it it was a drawn out kind of brawl i mean he really beat up slater and i do think i could very easily see next week slater coming out either with titus o'neill intel or not challenging the bunny losing the match and then we just do this whole thing and of how course, great would it be to see this gigantic bunny costume do a yakuza kick Come yeah on. and that takes off the man then hopefully we'd get a pop hopefully and yeah that would be terrific i think you're right on the money ashton and I just hope we see it play out. I was thoroughly entertained by this. I know, to Ashton's point, and I am glad he brought it up. I am critical of comedy. Of course, I, I do believe I always say when I'm critical of comedy that I know why they do it, and I'm very particular about that kind of stuff. But this hit me dead center. This was great. Good stuff, WWE. And especially if it's a new talent, very creative way to debut them. Big thumbs up for me. Or it could just be a one-off and literally have no reason behind it, in which case at least it still entertained you, right? Exactly, exactly. 